Well, good morning, everybody. I have some good news for all of you who have been waiting for these gear leg brackets to become available. They are now available at kitplaneenthusiast.com, and you can see how they wrap around a gear leg on the Super Duty. They do hold your brake line, which is really nice. It's a complete kit, which also includes the mounts on the bottom of the airplane, and I'm going to show you all of that right now. So if we start from the bottom of the airplane, you can see the uh, stainless braided uh, hoses from Aircraft Specialty. And they're along the back of the gear leg. We have these nice clamps that go around there, and you can see how they hold the hose. As it comes up here, there's a little Adele clamp that just gets bolted to your big bracket here that holds your gear on. Every single thing you need for this kit is included including the clamps, the bolt, the washer, and even the nut. Now, if you guys are familiar with how I did my brake lines, I had these custom aluminum brackets made for mine. So they just hold uh, the brake lines to the bottom. This is where they come out of the fuselage, obviously. Then there's, there's two lines, so these have two holes in them. These have two, and then they come back and go down to the gear. Now this is the complete kit. Uh, it is 3D printed. And guys, this is printed from a $400,000 printer. It's glass infused plastic. And you can just see, if I can zoom in here, how nice these uh, brackets are. You know, if your idea of 3D printing is like my idea, the only 3D printing I've ever seen before is where you can actually see each layer that it builds up, you know, from those cheap home, well, they're not cheap, but those home uh, 3D printers. Like I said, this is a $400,000 machine. And if you look at these things, they're absolutely beautiful. You don't see lines on them where it built up the layers. They're really, really nice. I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna put it just like this so it drives all the perfectionists crazy. <laughs> Never mind, it's driving me crazy. All right, so this is the kit. It comes with two brackets, one for, you know, obviously left and right gear leg. These are the brackets that have the, the two hoses that go through. And then we have the four single ones. You can see there's just a single hole in those. We have the two Adele clamps with the bolt, washer, and nut. And then we have all the screws, washers, and nuts that you can use to secure this to the bottom of the airplane. You could put a rivet through here also, if that's a little bit easier, um, but we do include all the hardware if you wanna use the, the nuts and bolts. So that is the complete kit there. That's every single thing you're going to need to secure your brake lines to the bottom of the airplane. Now, if you guys are building any of the Zenith airplanes, it's my personal recommendation that you replace those plastic brake lines with these stainless braided lines, especially on the Super Duty because it's a bigger, heavier airplane. It has dual calipers. And if you're landing on a sandbar somewhere, which is how this airplane is designed to be used, you don't wanna be standing on your brakes with those plastic brake lines. It can actually expand and you lose braking power with those plastic lines. If you do use the plastic lines, these will still work. Um, but again, much better idea to upgrade your brake lines. Now, if you guys are interested in buying these brackets or the brake line kits, you can go to kitplaneenthusiast.com. And if we come down here and click on hoses, these are all the products we have from Aircraft Specialty. They are located in Wisconsin. So all of these hoses are made in the USA. So we have dual brake line kits and uh, single brake line kits. If you go to this one here, the dual brake hose kit, uh, you can see up here, you have the option to select a 750 stole the Cruiser or the Super Duty. And the Super Duty is the one we want to look at right now because if you get the brake line kit for the Super Duty, the uh, bracket kit is now included with this kit. While you're on the website, if we go back to the home page, we do offer all the fairings for the 701, the Stoll, the Cruiser, and the Super Duty. We also have our own brand of custom seats available. These are really nice, high quality seats. We've had good feedback from customers. We do now have the pockets on the back of the seats. So if you order the seats now, 
Uh, you can see here we didn't originally have the pockets. Those are now included. There's no price increase for that. Placards, we do have some placards here that might be useful for your Zenith airplane and in parts. We have these really nice high quality Super Duty floorboards. These ones here are made for the brake lines. If you have the aircraft specialty brake line kit, those brake lines will run in this little channel right here. And if we go back to uh, parts, we also have these floorboards are the exact same thing, except they don't have that little bump in the front for the fuel line. So if you have a Viking engine or, or you ran your fuel lines a little bit differently and you didn't want that bump, you can order those. And there's some various other parts and stuff on there too. So this is kitplaneenthusiast.com and we certainly appreciate all of your business. Well guys, I really do mean that when I say thank you for your business. For everybody that's bought fairing kits or brake line kits or hoses or whatever you've purchased from the website, obviously I do make a small commission from those purchases. So I really do appreciate you supporting my YouTube channel and the little business that I've started kind of selling you guys some, what I think are some very nice high quality products. Now before I end the video, I'll just give you a quick update on what I've been working on. I have the outboard slat section here, and this is the inboard section, and I'm just working on getting these joined, and then I can get them uh, bolted or painted, primed and painted, bolted to the wing. I think I did show these in the last video. I have both of these fairings complete. They are ready for paint. It's just a little too cold in Michigan to be painting right now. Now the other thing I'm still working on is my nose gear strut. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I have, well I've started polishing the top where the donuts go. Um, and I did slide a donut on here and I didn't use any grease, but it didn't go on any looser than it did with the powder coating. So all of this that I'm doing might be in vain. Um, I'm not sure even with having this part polished and without the powder coating, if it's really gonna make those donuts any looser. The other thing I'm kind of double thinking or rethinking is um, if you watched my previous video, I wanted to drill a hole through the gear leg, put a steel tube in there for the tow bar. It is a kit that um, Zenith does offer, but I'm, I don't know, I'm still kind of pondering that. My original idea, if you watched one of my videos, I don't know, probably a year ago, um, when I had my, my landing gear built, I didn't put these three front bolts in because I had this little, this is just a thin aluminum template. But my idea was to just have a tow bar attachment here like this. It would get bolted on here. There'd be two holes drilled in here. And I would get one of those tow bars from Piper. And they have the little hook on the front that kind of goes in there. Then there's a little spring that kind of locks it in. Uh, in fact, if you look closely at the, the Zenith Super Duty, this is what they have on theirs. I would have to get this made out of at least 3 16th inch steel. The one on the Zenith Super Duty is 8th inch, and up here where the tow bar attaches is all kind of bent and distorted and the holes are oblonged. So even an 8th inch I think would be too thin. So I'd probably want to get one made out of 3 16th steel. This would actually be a lot easier to do than welding a tube in here. But this Piper tow bar, I've had on back order now for over a year. In fact, I finally just canceled the order because you can't get them. I'll have to maybe look and see if they're available yet. But that's kind of why I gave up on this idea is, is just the tow bars just aren't available anymore. So I don't know, that's what I'm thinking now. I may, I may just stick to this original idea because I still have to get a steel tube, drill the hole and then you know take it somewhere to get welded. It'd be a lot easier just to get this reprimed, put back on the airplane, and then get a steel plate made for here. Now, I did try to talk Roger at Zenith into making these, but I haven't had any luck with that yet. So maybe if you guys harass Roger and tell him we're all looking for these tow bar attach brackets, maybe uh, he'll make them available. And I am still working on the baffles, although I've kind of given up on this for now, just to do some other things because there's a lot of figuring out I need to do on here. I think what Zen Air did with the firewall forward kit for the Super Duty is they just took it from the 801 design because the 801 had a Lycoming engine in it. Um, and they use that now for the, the Super Duty. But the problem is the 801 is a really old design. And I think the engines were probably different back there back then also because this baffle kit really just doesn't fit this new engine. 
In fact, one of the things I find interesting is you can see the curve of the back baffle, which is, I'm assuming, the curve of the top of the cowl for the Super Duty. But if we look at the left side, it's, I don't even know what that's for. It's certainly not going to fit under the cowl. It's going to have to get trimmed way down like this. So I don't know if maybe this fit in the 801, but it doesn't fit here. None of this fits around here. I've had to really, really work a lot to trim this, and I still have to trim it a little bit more to get it to fit. According to the plans, this is supposed to rivet to this, which I'm not sure exactly how you do that because there's about an inch gap in here. Not a big deal. I can make a, just a piece of aluminum with a kind of a Z channel to fit in there to close it up. And one of the other issues with the back is it's about two inches too long. You can see here, uh, that'll eventually go up like that, but this uh, right here should be at the bottom of the cylinder. And you can see this part here that curves down is supposed to be right up next to here. So it's, it's again, it's about two inches too long. So uh, and a lot of work to, a lot of work to do on that baffling. And I mentioned before, about them using the 801 firewall forward kit for the Super Duty is, again, it's an old kit for an old airplane and things are different now. For example, new engines have these lightweight starters. So the solenoid is on the side of the, the motor instead of behind it or on the bottom, however it used to be. So what that means is normally this oil cooler would, would be mounted over here like this. And because of the solenoid here, now you can see I have it mounted Quite a, quite a bit far over, probably two inches further over, which I'm hoping still fits in the cowl. It might, it might, I might have to make a bump on the bottom of the cowl to accommodate that, but I won't know until the engine is in and I kind of fit the cowling, but I'm hoping Zenith is updating the firewall forward kit for, you know, the future Super Duties, just because, like I said, it is, there's a lot of things that are different now from the 801, so I think they really need to update this firewall forward kit. And finally, before I do finish up these slats, I do need to mount these arrow LED lights inside the leading edge. These are really nice lights. Each slat will have one, and the way I have them wired, you can have them both on, or you could have them wigwag. But this is the plans from Zenith for this, and it's just another little kit you can buy to mount these. These are all like the brackets and stuff you need. These are the two lenses. Um, so I will have to cut a, a hole in the leading edge of the slat to get those mounted, but that's something I have to do yet also. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. It's time for me to get back to work and try to get something done on this airplane on my days off. Again, thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting the website. Go visit kitplaneenthusiast.com. If you're building a Zenith, we've got a lot of cool stuff on there for you.